So good evening, good people. So today we are here with uh, Jayasri Mazumdar, who is a researcher in anthropology at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research in Mohali. We will be talking about her research, her passion for the subject, her thoughts on what can be done to propagate the appeal of uh, the social sciences uh, within the Indian education system, her work on the technological behavior of Macau monkeys, um, which is one of our main areas of research, and some other topics, which include, for example, links between the anthropological diversity of a place and the tourism that that place might attract, for example. So, uh, and with me is Prakash Singh, who is a geometer, he's a mathematician, like me, based at the University of Western Ontario in Canada. And I am Richard Biswas, also a mathematician based at the University of Manchester in the UK. Okay, so let me start by asking Jayasri the very basic question of what was it that got her into anthropology for the first time? So Jayasri, like, tell us a bit about your background, tell us a bit about how you got interested in pursuing this as a career in research. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, first of all, thank you inviting and um, if I just jump to your answer so first of all I got introduced to this particular subject during my bachelor's I had zoology honors and anthropology was just my past course and when I was re reading it like when I was going through anthropological scripts all the literature and everything about the course it just developed as a curiosity like what was this invisible string which was binding people in a community and how do we relate ourselves with another and then I came to know that it is not completely invisible. It's it's particularly visible. The cultural part of our life is actually visible. Uh, it's just that it does not have a physical identity. And then, uh, like, since I was a zoologist, obviously I was always interested in animal world. I tried to see and not try to see, basically. I found out that even animals relate uh, themselves with one another. Like, within a group, they have some kind of bonding. And culture is also taken to be a very key feature of human evolution. So if culture was the bonding factor between humans, what was the bonding factor between the primates or other animals? So slowly and slowly, like when you read about it, you come to understand that it has something to do with the evolution of humans in general and also the evolution of the animal world. And if you want to dig more, you have to start from a point. And that starting point for me was this particular technological behavior in the macaques. And that's how I have started my journey. And till now, I have discovered few behavioral aspects which could be related to the humans. And let's see where it goes on. But that's how it just took the pace and has continued yet. Uh, so I would like to add to this question. Uh, so yeah. is, is there anything in particular that you would like to point out that caught your attention? That, I mean, some, uh, culture, some, some culture within the animal community that, say, also affects humans and which is like a which has a feedback effect which affects the humans and then humans also affect the animals okay so if you're talking about how humans are affecting animals and how animals are affecting the human world I, like if the question is something like that then one thing what you can see is the bond between a mother and an infant so one thing what you will see is very similar uh, even in human world as well as in animal world that the mother infant bond is very important for the child's development and not only this, if you see the other aspects of bond, like for example, uh, it was in one of the literature, you must have heard the infant, uh, infanticide episodes of langurs. So basically, when one of the male langurs take over another group, it kills all the infants. And that is done to get uh, dominance over the females. Uh, there was one particular report in which it was uh, noted that the female had left the group with the infant because it wanted to protect the baby. But in order to be incorporated in the group, it had offered the baby and it was killed. So basically, it was a kind of bribe which she had to give in order to be included within the society. So, yes, uh, evolution is very interesting because you don't know when things turn, how things can be interpreted. Yes, sometimes it is a lot of your uh, anthropogenic genes, which is actually describing the human uh, animal behavior, which could be wrong but it could be right also. So you need a lot of study to actually come up to a conclusion. So yeah, they are very much related emotionally, cognitively, because they can also sense what is right and what is wrong, and then they follow accordingly. Mm 
Yeah, before before moving on to my next question about your research, I'd just like to ask a very small question here. Um, yeah. When you when you study these animals, like is there something when you study mm -hmm. these primates, is there something about yeah. the way they exchange emotions between them or the way they interact with each other that teach you things about human interactions and tell you that maybe without formalities or without inhibitions, if human beings knew how to act with each other, they would maybe act in a very similar way. Uh, basically, uh, it will be very wrong to say that there is no formality in the monkey kingdom or in the monkey lineage because even they follow a certain hierarchical pattern. So as like in our society, we have the caste system. We have certain order how uh, different categories of people are placed according to your uh, eth ethnicity as well as your caste category. So in macaques, you don't have castes like Brahmins and Shudras and uh, uh, Kshatriyas or etc. Cetera, et cetera. But yeah, they have ranks. They have higher ranking individual, intermediate as well as the low ranking individuals. And when you see the interaction between the members of these different ranks, they, it's, it's a lot different. High ranking individuals, they always get the best of the fruits. They also climb on the topmost point. Now, why am I talking about why they climb on the topmost point? So in a tree, the topmost point, they, re, they get the maximum sun, sunlight and that's why the fruits are much more nourished than the, it, than the fruits which are on the lower bottom. So basically those fruits which are lying on the topmost part of the canopy, they, they are reserved for the high ranking individuals. Whereas the low ranking individuals, they rely on this high ranking individual to throw those and then they feed on them, but they don't climb up. If they climb up, that's taken as a form of ribble, I can say. And then there is a dominance role. There is a fight for dominance. So yeah, even there's a lot of thing to understand, just not emotions. They, even they have a certain way of reacting and acting with one another based on their ranking. So that's how it works. Wow. And, and as I said earlier, like it's part of the cultural evolution as well. So it is yes, probably yes. not a matter of surprise that they have yeah. these elements within their societies, which are not very dissimilar yes. to what human beings have within exactly. their own societies. Um, OK, fine. Uh, that, so okay, I would sorry. like to ask a question. Um, so uh, earlier, what I was asking was, um, so for an, for an example, which I mean, I know very uh, sparsely. Uh, so humans have, uh, say, humans have affected the way the way the dogs i mean live around us i mean from eternity and how how their behavior has changed uh, as a community so my question was on these lines i mean have have humans or have animals changed our culture and is there any specific example of to to i mean to prove the statement that yeah we have changed our, each other each other's cultures but examples can't prove, like they can only provide evidence, but yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can I can see him and hear him. Oh yeah, uh, so I, I mean, I was just asking, I mean, if there are enough number of examples which support this claim that um, that the inter, the, we exchange our cultures and we affect our cultures a lot, I mean, Theoretically, it's obviously it's. I mean, we expect that we we in we influence each other's cultures, but are there what are the examples that we can provide? Sorry, am I am I audible? Can you can you hear him, Jayasri? Hello. Hello. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of. Like tourism, if I talk about, like influence the way we. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I think we're fine now. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. One example is like. Uh, okay, fine. If I'll not give you the tourism example, I'll just give you a very simple. I'll give you a very simple example. Like you find the macaques in the urban society, right? Yes, you okay. find macaques in the urban society and people are really, they, they don't like macaques invading their homes, stealing the groceries, etc., etc., all this thing, okay. 
Now one thing, how they are coming to the uh, urban area, yeah, that's a different uh, history. Altogether, that's a different set of questions altogether. But how, uh, like the macaques are influencing human life, like for example, if you go to Shimla, uh, there is a lot of macaques there. Like they have been uh, like introduced in that particular land, they have breeded like immensely. And because of that, there is a huge population. And then the government has actually asked the people kill. Then they will be, and they have even fought like the so that more breeding. And they claim you is garbage. There is this, there is that, and yeah, it's that's why like one person is influencing the other. The other is also influencing the other. So it's like a circle coming back. We are having, I think, a few technical issues right now, like so a minute next, ago. I, when I yeah, like a minute ago, uh, I think Prakash's video feed was fine to me, but it was probably not fine to you. Like you were not getting to see his video properly. And now for a while, like for the last maybe five, six seconds, your audio, like I could hear you speak, but I could hear you say two things at the same time, basically. Yeah, yeah. same you. Yeah. yeah, so okay, let's okay. wait for two seconds. <laughs> okay. Okay, now fine. Um, yeah, those were some very insightful answers. Uh, let me just let me just go to my next question, which is about your research. So you are a researcher, as I said in the introduction, like you work in primatology and you have produced a colossal amount of original research over the course of your PhD. So like, could you tell us a bit about what you do in your research or what you have done like over the past few years in your PhD, uh, like the discoveries you make, the experiences you gathered, like just, just enlighten us on those. Like friends, would you? Uh, okay, so basically, uh, the subject field which I'm dealing with is called primate archaeology. It's like a, it's like a combination of primatology and archaeology. So I study the primate behavior and I try to interpret from an archaeological perspective, and I try to answer how this could be related to the evolution. It could be culture, it could be the technological aspect, it could be the evolution of the species as a whole, the habit, and as well as the behavior aspect. So till now, I have worked in three different islands, like three. Nicobar Islands, basically, the Great Nicobar, Little Nicobar, and Kachal. So, uh, yeah, in all these three islands, the most important thing is that the animal grouping system is different from one another. And not only this, the foraging behavior is different. So, uh, my first and foremost, uh, like, uh, interest was to understand, like, uh, because when I was going through my literature uh, study phase, that time I have noticed that long tail macaques from Thailand and Burma and Burmese long tail macaque, as well as the Thailand long tail macaque they have a lot of a lot of data which talks about tool use and that time i like i was wondering why why there is no study from india as such because we also have long tail macaque and they live so close together like frankly speaking nicobar islands is much closer to thailand thailand or indonesia rather than to mainland india so yeah so because they're so closely related there could be some aspects that they also use tools and if they are using tools it will be a wonderful study so that was a main reason and I actually I selected two particular sites was uh, first was in Assam and the second was in Nicobar. Then after my pilot study, I stuck to Nicobar and that's where I'm continuing right now. So my first uh, uh, like aim was to see if long tail macaques found in India also use tools or not. So this was my first motive. And yes, it got successfully cleared that yes, they do use tools, but they are not similar to the tools which are used by the macaques found in Thailand. The entirely different set of tools. Then again, the second question was that how is the frequency? Because in long tail macaques, the frequency may not be as high as the chimpanzees or capuchins, but it is uh, co uh, like collectively higher. But in long tail macaques, of, found, frequency of what? Using the tools. Like, how often do you see them? How often do you see them? That's okay. the thing. Yeah. So then, uh, then I saw, okay, fine. Tool use is present in Indian uh, macaques, but the thing is, the frequency is low. And there could be some other factors. So right now, what I'm trying to understand is, is what factors are affecting this tool-related behavior. Because uh, first of all, there is variation between, within the same species. They are the same species which is found in India. They are the same species which is found in Thailand. Yet the behavior is totally different. Not only that, even the foraging system is different. The type of food they forage on, that is also different. So was it the ecological factor or was it the social factor which is influencing this tool, tool use behavior? 
so right now I'm analyzing this particular phase. Like my first aim was to see if they use tools. Second was what is the frequency? Those I have already crossed. So my second and the uh, third and the fourth phase is to understand what factors are actually influencing this tool use behavior and why this clustering of different tool behavior is happening. So that's what I'm doing right now. I have a, I have a related. I have a related question here and after that, uh, uh, like Prakash can ask what he wants to ask here. The thing is, how do you define the creation of knowledge in a field like this? Say you go to Little Nicobar and you observe the technological behavior of Macaws yeah. over there for say five months, six months. So for the period of six months, you see them doing some things uh, at certain frequencies. You take down your data and you go back to say your university and you publish it. Now, yeah. of course, of course, one cannot prove, one cannot like one cannot prove explicitly or empirically that whatever you saw in those six months continued happening in a similar at a similar frequency after you left. So, what is the what is the like structural framework for producing knowledge in this area? Like, is there like a period of time uh, over which any observation can be deemed as an observation that's probably yeah. true for a very uh, long time? Because there are other factors. Yes, go on. Other factors? Yeah. Uh, Can you hear me? I think she's having any problems. Can you hear me? No? I can hear you. Um, Ajayashri, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, so you said there were there are other factors. So okay. what are yes, other factors? Our... Yes, yes, I can. Yes. Yes, so basically. One have to look mental or any any other kind of stress which comes forward to them. They will change their behavior. For example, in macaques, there was a study in Thailand which had shown that the foraging behavior was affecting prey frequency in the particular island. And when the prey frequency had gradually reduced, even the tool using technique had reduced. So it's like uh, vice versa, like the more what you use is just like the resource, uh, so it goes the closer it goes to extinction, you or have the object resource. And yes, if someone wants to visit to that particular island and see for themselves if they are behaving in the same manner, they have to visit within a particular time time frame because yes, no behavior can just vanish suddenly unless and until there is a natural calamity which is happening suddenly or something which just to change uh, as a whole. But no, it's all of a sudden. If you 15 years, then yes, the probability of seeing that particular rare behavior, if it's a very rare behavior, then yes, the probability decreases. But if the frequency is very high, for example, the capuchins as well as the chimpanzees, they has been they have been using tools since generations one after the another. So 10 15 years, even if even if you visit them after 10, 15 years, there's a very less frequency that that particular behavior will just vanish away completely. But yeah, when you talk about certain particular behaviors, which is very rarely seen in particular individuals or in particular species, then the time frame when are you visiting? For example, Japanese macaque, there was this particular study on one of the female known as Imu. So she had actually introduced this potato washing in the salt water uh, mm -hmm. phenomenon in which and which was uh, gradually followed by the group members but then again after few time it was lost it was not uh, like uh, like passed from one generation to another it was just followed within one generation it was, uh, like uh, cultural evolution or you can say how uh, individuals within a group learn from one another by observation or something like that so yeah if, if you're talking about rare behavior then time matters but if you're talking about something which is very commonly seen or which is very you know which is very frequently seen in a particular species it will not just vanish it has to be certain factors which will lead to the vanishing of this particular behavior otherwise it won't okay yeah that's that's a good answer okay, i would like to ask um, so i'm just curious uh, 
how would say say a layman like me would even start defining something yes. like frequency and what would be the statistical models that i will use to compare the frequency of tool using in say the nicobar macaus and thalian macaus and uh, mm -hmm. and yeah and even if you yeah uh, and even if you just forget this this frequency i mean we can we can observe other other uh, other life traits of these animals and we can compare them uh, so i'm just curious to understand what kind okay. of statistical models do you use okay. to even so take note of you talk about frequency at all okay one second one second one second everyone just don't say anything for 2 seconds okay now go yeah just continue Yes. Yeah, you can answer this question now. I mean, there was a lag, and the, I think the lag is gone now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you want to know how you can compare one particular animal's behavior with the other animal? Yeah. Uh, in I mean, in particular, say you observe some that, a list of five or ten macaws okay. here in in Nicobar, and say you observe okay. some other five or ten macaws yeah. in Thailand. First of all, the, mm -hmm. how do you generalize these behaviors to the whole kingdom of those macaws? And how, I mean, there are problems in generalization because there is diversity even within a local macaw family. So huh. I, I would like to understand, say, I mean, uh, do, do, you, do you not, can you not have a function, a function of a trait and on this local family of macaws? and a function of trait mm -hmm. on some other family of macaws and then you compare these functions and if you compare these functions then you will need heavy statistical machinery mm -hmm. so yes that is where my interest okay. lies mm -hmm. okay 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 uh, you're asking a very technical question okay. so first of all when you're comparing two dif when you're comparing animals from two different ecological settings you cannot uh, actually imply that this particular behavior is similar to the animals present in the another region because they have different geographical settings, they are exposed to different type of ecological stress as well as social stress. So these five factors have to be eliminated. You have to first neutralize those things, unless and until you neutralize those things and bring those animals to the equal spheres. Comparing them becomes very difficult. Is the structure is different. Third, the type of resource they feed on that is also different. So under all this, uh, or under all this category, comparing this to animals is actually very difficult. But neither the less, you can compare. And we do do, uh, do this particular type of study. We try to see what type of tools are being used by, uh, say, chimpanzees. What type of tools are being used by capuchins? What type of tools are being used by long-tailed macaques? And we try to compare ki how the tools have evolved. Uh, we do this. But the thing is that first, first step is that you have to neutralize. You have to first understand if the particular behavior done by species A is also similar to the uh, behavior done by species B. For example, stone tool used by macaques and by chimpanzees is more or less the same. But they, they say by capuchins, like the type of tools, variety of tools is higher in chimpanzees. Now, that is something which is attributed to the hand, evolution of hand, how they are gripping the tool or something like that. So there are many factors actually, which is affecting the tool technology, the variation as well as the frequency. So if to answer to your question is that if you have to generalize, you have to eliminate, you have to stabilize your sampling size. You have to mm -hmm. make a lot of changes, which is practically impossible because you cannot change the genetic makeup or the evolution of one species to, from another. But comparison is possible. It's not like you can't compare, but if you want to get statistically by putting a neutral constant and then comparing with it, that is pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. No, I mean, the question that Prakash asked like came from a concern that I had as well, like earlier when we were talking about uh, making conclusions about the behavior of a group mm -hmm. of primates in, say, mm -hmm. Uh, in the Nicobar Islands, uh, that was exactly like that's that's very similar to what I was thinking. Like, how can you make those conclusions? And now, yeah, your, your answer, like, does I mean answer the concerns that I had in my mind? Because in our area, like in our kind yes. of pure maths, 
it's there is a very straightforward mechanism of generalizing like you generalize okay. from axioms you generalize from theorems that have been proved using other results that have been proved using other results you go like this and it ends with a set of axioms whereas uh, once you go beyond the realm of the hard sciences like say mathematics or uh, theoretical physics pure mathematics theoretical okay. physics uh, it it becomes it becomes quite difficult also philosophy like one can study philosophy as a hard science just because you can lay out a bunch of axioms and then you can form your conclusions form your ideas based on them um so now i'm going to make a slight but detour you, sorry but even in uh, uh, like uh, uh, people in anthropology or in primatology they do comparative studies between monkeys apes as well as humans they do such studies and then they try to read how innovation might have uh, come into being how uh, any type of uh, behavior how it is focusing like um, i'm sorry i'm not able to remember which particular thesis uh, and whose it was i'll try to recall and this particular uh, researcher had compared uh, the behavior of capuchins apes as well as children okay and he, he had tried to understand the skill, innovation skill and uh, and according to his study he has found out that uh, rather than a uh, chimpanzee or a uh, chimpanzee or capuchins the human ch child when they are working in a group they have this higher uh, cognitive ability to understand or to uh, pass message from one individual to another or to learn from another individual it was higher compared to others it's not like they did not not learn they so did learn but if you have to see the frequency then yes it is higher so that is something which we should can have to uh, has helped human to evolve and So uh, yeah, development is very different again. But yeah, like if I'm talking about tool use and evolution tools, then uh, if you have to see in the wild habitat, then many things have to uh, have to kept have to be kept in mind before you proceed. Because in an uh, like experimental setting, you can control a lot of things. You can control the environment. You can control what type of food. Any other when it comes to the wild habitat, you can't control nature. So that is one very like yeah. you can say a drawback if you want to do. Yeah, since since we have already started talking about nature, it seems apt that I bring up conservation, which was going to be the theme of my next question. So, like in the first email that I sent out to you, I talked about the existence of macaws in Gibraltar and how that yeah. might be used by the British government to advertise Gibraltar as a place worth going to for tourism purposes, and I, and I said yeah. how that might. Yeah. Uh, act as a boost to the british economy post covid post brexit so forget about gibraltar forget about brexit forget about yeah. covid with the nicobar islands like of course for other set kinds of political reasons mm -hmm. geographical reasons uh, citizens of mainland india can't just go to nicobar as as tourists we all know that if yeah. however that yeah. reality was absent by that reality i mean the fact that indians mm. can't visit nicobar as tourists if that was absent if that was not true and if say you were someone who had researched a lot into the technological behavior of not just macaws of say a whole variety of primates who live who live uh, yeah. on those islands mm -hmm. and say i as a government official or as a representative of a government department asked you to make that into a little advertisement how 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 would you do that like can you take the fact that there are all these uh, fascinating uh, primates living in the nicobar islands or living in say an island of the nicobar nicobar like archipelago or whatever uh, can you take that fact and turn that into an advertisement for tourism like is that possible or would you as someone who is passionate about conservation say uh -huh. that that's not an ideal thing to do like if a place is brimming with anthropological diversity maybe it's not wise yeah. for people to visit that place very frequently uh very often with i don't know big cars that will cause a lot of damage to the economy cause a lot of damage to the carbon balance carbon imbalance whatever so so how would yeah. you how would you spin uh an anthropological reality into something that can be used in an advert advertisement or would you not do that okay uh if you ask to me then i will not use it for tourism purpose i am and i'm not going to use any of this data mm -hmm. 
to attract tourists to that particular mm. island first uh, like uh, you have to understand like uh, like i was going to say that before also like uh, it is actually a it's it's actually a circle okay so these islands are attractive to other people who are not living in those islands because of the rarity uh, because mm. how serene the nature is and you have to understand um tourism is a product of capitalism when anything becomes rare the market value rises mm. and uh, wildlife tourism is one such product of capitalism mm. only and you have to understand another thing the people who visit to this particular island uh, they are not people who are close to nature uh, you don't you don't find people who live in such ecologically diverse uh, like places visiting other places to enjoy the nature Really? They live in their own natural environment. You don't find like. No, no. I have, I have. There, are, there like, are islands. There are islands, uh, like across the near the coast of Scotland, for example, that I have visited only because I was interested yeah. in the natural yeah, beauty yeah. of those places. So, like, yeah. I'm sure, like, people, people do exist. No, like, I'm saying people. No, no, no. I'm saying people from those particular islands who live in such ecologically diverse place. right they won't be that much interested to visit another natural you know another ecologically di- diverse because they are already living in that the curiosity of knowing the nature will be higher among those individuals who don't live in a natural setting who live in the towns or something like that this mm-hmm. is what i mean mm-hmm. so when such people come to a natural uh, like a naturally ecologically diverse place they don't understand nature first you have to understand that the main mm-hmm. thing about nature they don't understand that they have just come for few days to enjoy it mm-hmm. and in a capitalist society nature becomes natural resource a human becomes human resource so mm-hmm. yes it profits the state yeah it profits the individual because they are earning from the tourists but if you have to talk about the conservation so tourism is a kind of anti conservation you are disrupting the ecological mm-hmm. setting mm-hmm. yeah like because there are because certain period uh, in the animal life like the breeding season or the reproductive season all this particular seasons are very sensitive and then mm-hmm. uh, making the animals getting exposed to the outside world makes a very big impact on the like animal as a whole so yeah if you ask me but can there be can there, but, but but can there be a yes? somewhat close way of dealing with this like can there be a remedy or a solution because yeah, i know like, i know many national parks in south asia like not just india like all all mm-hmm. across south asia even in china like there are many panda parks in china uh, whose economies are entirely dependent on the revenues that they mm-hmm. earn from tourists so tourism yeah. is a very direct link to the local local economies in which those national parks do, uh, those like conservatories thrive so what you are saying i i i can see why that is a very sensible point to make that if you are there when they are supposed to be taking part in say i don't know certain mating exercises certain breeding exercises then you are disrupting their life just like if yeah. someone was to uh, visit i don't know if someone was to intrude upon the bedrooms of human beings it wouldn't be so nice uh-huh. for the human beings living in those bedrooms but what i'm saying is okay. the economy is dependent in a very direct way on the when the local economies are dependent in a very yeah. direct way the money that tourism is bringing in uh, wouldn't it be a bit unwise perhaps to say that tourism is bad in a very blanket way like it should not be encouraged but can't can't it be encouraged to such an extent that the intrusion element is minimized whereas the boosting up the economy element is maximized okay okay minimized. uh yeah 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 i got it so basically yeah that's what i said like to tourism if you talk about tourism it's basically anti like conservation because it's a product of capitalism and in capitalism i'm sorry to say there is no value for life it's only resources mm-hmm. and from where you get the income that is the whole benchmark of capitalism and we talk about china japan india these are developing capitalist country mm-hmm. so like uh, once the resources are over the market is over when you're talking about is is there a way yeah there are ways that's why government put up laws laws like you should not throw plastic here you should not feed the animal but the problem here is how many tourists actually follow it so here is the main thing like not all everyone is willing to follow it even if they follow it's not huge it's not huge 
they do, they they are least bothered like unless and until there is someone there is someone to po police your activity each and every time they will not do that so a lot of moral uh, responsibility comes on us as a tourist also how we treat the yes. environment yeah like I, I would most of the it, time yeah. yeah most of the time people go with this concept okay i'm going there for 7 days or for 10 days and then i'm not going to visit that particular place ever so how does it matter and that how does it matter causes a chain mm. you 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 don't mm -hmm. do it it will not happen on its way so you get economic wealth i agree but economic wealth to a certain extent once it becomes extinct even your like income source goes yeah so the, so, so, so a possible solution uh, could be the um, could exercising of more responsibility on part of the tourists on part of the people yes. who are visiting those places that that could be yes. that could be a possible uh, solution like yeah, it's not it possible with, yeah it's not just with like anthropological let's say subjects of interest that we have this problem in mm -hmm. the world we have this yeah. problem with mountains take nepal for example a, a, yeah. the, the economy of nepal is hugely dependent on the revenues that the government gets in uh, to the like mm -hmm. coffers basically from the money that all those who want to climb mount everest pay and yeah. for a long time for the past for the best part of a decade now uh there's been this campaign to persuade mm -hmm. the nepalese government to mm -hmm. stop giving out everest climbing permits to whoever pays mm -hmm. the money uh, they they okay. see the point because of course it's their country they have been there for generations they know why this can be a bad thing but they also don't yeah. want to do that to the extent that might to an extent that might be advisable because again like that's where they they're getting the money from and again uh, another example could be like there is a small district there are two small districts in the north of england called the lake district and the peak district uh, there are some nice trekking routes like say the appalachian trail in the us uh, that sort of trekking routes um not much high mountains but very picturesque there are many lakes um for the longest time the locals who live there have complained that whenever people from london people from the south of england visit those parts of the country they leave behind yeah. so much litter so much waste that it becomes almost yeah. impossible for them to lead their daily lives as if there is no intrusion so although people are not visiting the lake district or the peak district to see the human beings who are living there the kind of behavior that they indulge in once they are there yeah. ends up causing a lot of trouble to the people who actually yeah. live there like all the all, all year uh, okay prakash yes. like to, to yeah yeah to, uh, i think i think we should uh, move on to the next question because the this, the debate we are having right now is similar to the construction versus existence uh, mm -hmm. debate that we have in maths or mm -hmm. sure. the debate yes. that we have in journalism that uh, whether you should observe or whether you should change yeah, yeah, the yeah. thing that you are observing so i think these debates will go on yes. forever yeah we can yeah, we can talk continue. yeah we can talk a bit so, more about this after we stop recording maybe yeah, uh, if, yeah <laughs> so okay fine. on a, on a lighter note i would like to ask jayshree uh, so yeah. can you can you tell us some stories that that you have observed in this um in these nicobar islands uh, which say which would make that place more human mm. to say other people who are listening to those stories i mean so for a person like me or i mean mm. when i say me i mean a general person who is person. who is yeah uh, who has no knowledge of uh, who have who has absolutely yeah. no idea what these regions are so i can think okay. of that area as a like live as a non exotic Uh, non exotic place so okay so yeah if i have to take you on a tour to the island through my words then yes uh, like the mornings are very beautiful the skies uh, like it's always red or orange in color and slowly it turns to blue it's blue it's it's really like ocean blue and then you hear only animals only the cry of the birds the how they they sing and everything in one particular island i was living with the tribals because there was no modern construction as such yeah. so you'll have to live with the tribal and then you have to take permission from the ctc which is a uh, chief uh, chief of the tribes so yeah and uh, like from his permission only i was living with them they are wonderful people really wonderful people early in the morning they just go for fishing in their canoe you can say and then they come by afternoon or just uh, like past say 5 10 minutes past noon and uh, they mostly live in the forest they they love the forest 
basically and if you ask them like uh, are you interested to the city world or something well no it's too crowded for them it's like it's too crowded we love this particular place so the day was like this it is pleasant like any time but in ecobar any time it can rain so you have to be ready to like face the rain and any time which can be some drizzles to heavy shower and uh, yeah the evening is wonderful you can see the like sun setting down very nicely you can see it setting down right in front of you you don't have to you know like uh, record it and then fast forward to see it it happens really in front of you the, like so the sun sets over there earlier than the western part of the country and it even rises early as usual the nights are very beautiful starry nights literally starry nights a lot of stars and mm -hmm. uh, when it's the full moon you can see the moon is very large it's large like i can't explain like it's wonderful the ocean is very harsh because it's like it's uh, like beyond 10 degree channel so the current is very strong over there so the ocean is strong when you're lucky it will be very nice so you can just go without puking so thankfully i don't have ocean sickness so for me the ocean was very good and when you are actually in a canoe and when you're traveling around the islands you can see turtles just near your boat going crossing by you can see different types of corals beautiful corals the water is that much clear like even at the depth of 30 40 meters you can see the like you can see the surface so okay. it's that clear so like if i have to say more i can just go beyond and beyond and you can <laughs> see the smile i'm having on my face because i can recollect all of them it was wonderful it was wonderful are, are you still in touch with are you still in touch with any of the tribes people you met there Yes, yes, yes. So like sometimes I give them a call. Sometimes when they come to another island, when they have tower, tower, they call me back. Then they ask me, "Madam, how are you?" Then I am wow. like, "I am good. How are you?" <laughs> so, so these people, they they know Hindi. They can speak. They know Hindi. Hindi. Yes, they know wow. Hindi because uh, in those islands only researchers can go, and uh, you can say uh, the people, the officials uh, who are in police department, only they can go. So to communicate with them. they have to speak in one language right they normally speak in nicobaris and nicobaris also has variation from one island to another the nicobaris yeah. changes thoda thoda kar obviously like in the bits and parts it changes uh, and uh, they are a big fan of bollywood so like that so they see a lot of bollywood movies they like which they copy in yeah. cds compact this and they bring it back to the island and then they watch they learn it like that so yeah. that is a nice style and it's wonderful Yeah, I'm sure. I'm and sure very hard working, very hard working people. Like in this particular island, they did not have water, drinking water. So they had to travel to another island and bring back drinking water and take it up to the hill top where their house is. So they were very hard working people. Like uh, frankly speaking, like looking at them, I felt like okay, Jayshree, this is called hard work. This is literally hard work. Uh, But don't yeah, you don't you find it don't you? Don't you find it ironic, or shall we say, unfortunate, that in the twenty-first century they are having to carry water like that for daily use? Or wouldn't you? Yeah, wouldn't you so this is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is that uh, uh, the uh, the islanders of this particular island, or you can say the tribals in Nicobar and Andaman Nicobar Islands, they are protected by the Tribal Protection Act. Okay. So where they live is their choice. Yes. So they want to live in that island. it is their choice mm -hmm. they like that island better than the other island so they will live there so no no but i'm no but i'm just saying like of course uh, it's their choice whether they want to live it's their choice how they want to live their lives yeah. but at the same time like since you you know a lot about and you've worked a lot on the technological mm. behavior of these primates who mm. are basically mm. cohabitants mm. co habit mm -hmm. what's the word like they they co reside with them right on those islands The, yeah. those those primates those not co exist co i didn't i didn't mean to say exist but like anyway like i mean they are yeah. there as are these people so you look at yeah. the primates you look at how technologically they are not i mean they are, they are quite advanced like they do know how to use different kinds of mm -hmm. tools in so many different kinds of ways and at the same time yeah. you look at what's what's the reality is like technologically speaking uh technological mm -hmm. behavior wise shall we say with the nicobaris people and you see there is this there is this difference between how they are using technology or how they are not using technology let's say versus mm -hmm. how their neighbors not just the indians say the people in myanmar the people in thailand 
uh, 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 like that that uh, contrast. Like, what do you make of that con contrast? Like, does it but does it ever cross your mind that it might be a good idea for mm -hmm. a government? I'm not saying the Indian government it might be some yeah. other like um, some other agency. It might be it might be a non-government mm -hmm. agency even. Uh, mm -hmm. it, do you ever think like it might be a good idea for someone like that, like a body or an agency, to bring mm -hmm. to them modes of using s some more advanced types of technology? that might significantly better their lives. I'm saying better their lives, not just change their lives. Like you offer yeah. it to them and you see how they react. I got it. Yeah. yeah. So over here, the concept of better life, what you define as better life, what is better for you, not necessarily mm -hmm. has to be better for them. Mm -hmm. So and another thing, what I've already told you, whatever decisions happen in these particular restricted islands depends on the CPC because right. he's the head of the island. The government cannot interfere. If he said they don't want, means they don't want. And he he will obviously consult with his own tribe members. So it happens in that way. And when you're talking about, yes, how technologically advanced we are and where they are, this is a very wrong comparison because mm -hmm. most of our problems are also because of this technology, if you realize it. Because if yeah, we are so that, much technologically no, advanced, that's why, that's why, that's why I have a lot was... of different issues also coming together. Sure, like like that's why I was, I was being a bit hesitant to use the word advanced. Yeah. Like that's why I was yeah. probably I, I would say I maybe I may be more com comfortable with comfortable with different. Like you look at the differences. Okay. Uh, yes. Say there is someone living in place X, and his or yeah. her mom is in her deathbed, um, some hundreds of miles away or some tens of miles away somewhere far, yeah. and they yeah. can't go there. If they had yeah. a car, shall we say, if they had a car, okay. or say if they had Zoom call or something like that, mm -hmm. they would have maybe yeah. got a chance to see their mother. So yeah. like yeah. Yeah. these kind of things, like it, it's a very, it's a very stupid example. But I'm just saying, no, no, like, no. like uh, these facilities are provided to them. So there are these police departments in in these uh, restricted islands, and the tribal, if they have to go to the hospital, they give a call. It's a radio call. You have satellite mobiles over there. It's a radio call and they send the Coast Guard vote. If the normal passenger vote is not available, they send the Coast Guard vote there and then to fetch the people from this particular island and take them to a place where they can take proper care for it. Maybe hospital, it can be something else also. So it's not like they are not provided, but to take or not depends on their, it's, it's their yeah, decision. Yeah, as I said, as I said like, and, and, and yeah. as, far as, I, as far as I know, it's not just but one yeah. act. There is a there is a litany of legislation yeah. legislative acts passed by the Indian government since the 50s, I think, which have made sure yeah. that it will be entirely up to the islanders to decide how they want yes. to live their lives, what kind of jurisdictions they want to live, they they choose to live exactly. under. There are other things, exactly. even with property rights, like forest rights, the way forest rights differ from property rights, and yeah, there there is a whole, whole bunch of legal legalities yeah. which make it possible for them to yeah. live like the way they yeah. do. Um, okay, I, I have uh, two more questions, but Prakash, do you want to add something here? Uh, yeah, uh, so, so uh, what kind of curriculum is followed in schools in Nicobar Islands? So, okay, are there, we... the curriculum is very different. It's very, very different. Like uh, in this particular island where I was staying, teachers don't go to this island because there is no electricity and this issue and that issue. Okay, so the children, they go for some period of months to a college and then they come back to the island. So they have home in different different islands as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of very different from the mainland because uh, the school is in another island. The kids are in different island. There is a ferry which goes every day, like taking tours from one island to another, taking the kids from each island, dropping them to school. And because of the weather, if that ferry gets cancelled, then those kids will stay in this other island. They will have a second home even over there. So it's very different. You can't compare the life over here and the life in Nicobar. It's totally a different world. And now, thankfully, like I think the optical fibers have been activated like on 15th of August, maybe by our uh, prime minister. So now the Internet will be, I think, better compared to what it was before. So or let's compared see how to what this they have in Kashmir, let's say. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So over there, it's it's not less. Sometimes like they don't are at all. So and yeah. some. Sometimes, like internet doesn't work in all, all, the, all the island. Only BSNL is the only network which you will get in those islands. 
so these are network issues which they also want the network issues to be fixed and that's a lot of bureaucratic thing which is getting stuck in between for which it's not developing as such but um, yeah the school system is very different there the kids learn for 7 days then again take a break for 3 4 days then again go back for 7 days it's something like that could you describe and something if, in the yes. in the curriculum that shows that it's it's very very different from say what i studied in my school days or what you studied in your school days okay i have not seen the curriculum as such uh and, and most of them like there is no private school in nicobar it's all government school so it's all uh, government school so, only so is it government yeah. of india or government of nicobar uh i think it is government of india it's a ut right it's a, it's, it's a, a ut territory because it's a ut it's a union it's a territory oh. so they have kendriya vidyalayas i think they have kendriya vidyalayas don't they uh they have uh, this one navodaya navodayas Okay. Uh, yeah, they have even government schools also, which you have primary schools, high secondary school, yes. Yes, but yes, they yes. do have Navodaya. I think one one Navodaya is there in Nicobar. So yeah, it's like that. Navodaya will oh, have okay. the same curriculum yes. all over country. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. No, and I, I have I have looked into the legal issues behind these things a bit. That's why, like, like I can see why. No, I I, I had a concern yeah. that uh, wouldn't wouldn't having say. Uh, a, a government of India uh, run run curriculum in these islands. Then, wouldn't it, in some sense, be? I mean, you're colonizing their 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 mindset, Minds. yeah. And they will grow up desiring those things which we desire, and I mean, they will lose somewhat their independence. Also, maybe it depends. By, it depends a bit on the subject as well. Like if you're teaching them Newton's laws of physics. Uh, is that you colonization of the mind? The colonization part does not actually fit over there because the curriculum is a lot similar to what we have studied. It may be slightly different because the syllabus is getting updated. I passed in the year two thousand eight, my tenth board. So yes, right now it's more than twelve years. So obviously the syllabus has changed. Uh, but if you're talking about uh, like change in view or thought process, obviously Newton's law. A- As we have studied, they will also be taught in the same manner. Mm-hmm. You cannot change the Newton's law. You cannot change the facts, basically. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, the concept of colonization doesn't fit because you are not ruling their life. You are not making them do something against their will. Mm-hmm. They don't want to come to school. They are not forced to come to school. Uh, One could argue it. that we are imposing our will on them. I mean, their wills are changing according to us. So, I mean, uh, growing up, I'd say I'd say an important point to keep in mind here would be the fact that, after all, they are our fellow citizens. So, if you yeah. want to, if you want to disregard that fact, which you can do, then yes, then like there, there will be no point even considering like treating them the same way or same way within the uh, within the limits that the current legislation allows us to, uh, keeping in mind the the tribal act that Jayasri was mentioning, but. as long as you do keep in mind that they are our fellow citizens i would say it sort of makes sense to let's say uh, give them same this to to make it possible for them to let's say enter the indian administrative services or the indian like police services whatever armed forces because yeah, they do, uh, yeah. yes yes they do, yeah. they do. yes yes yeah. not like they don't No, 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 no. I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying since they are our fellow citizens, it makes sense to consider these questions and act accordingly. A similar set of uh, concerns were taken into account when the uh, did something happen? Yeah, I think Jesse's video. Yeah, I think I think it, yeah, I think Jesse's yeah. video was. Again. Yes, I was saying a similar set of concerns were taken into account when the. Can you hear me now? Yes, can, I can hear you now. Yeah, I was saying a similar set of concerns uh, was taken into account when the federal government in the US um, was figuring out how mm-hmm. to deal with the Indian populations, like different tribes okay. of Indians that existed there. And over there, there was a bitter history, which thankfully, mm-hmm. like India doesn't really have with the Nicobaris people, or even. with most of the other tribes that do exist within the geographical borders of india no, uh, because no. like <clears throat> my question was uh, there had been actual wars like actual wars actual genocides uh, in the 1700s or uh, and before then even sorry yeah go on. 
Oh yeah, uh, I mean we shouldn't we shouldn't keep talking yes. about the same same thing. Uh, yes. What what I wanted to say was that uh, uh, maybe we can come back to this in the end. Uh, so, I mean, in order to say tell them stories about, I mean, a person living in Nicobar, why should that person or why should that kid, I mean, learn stories of say various parts of India or say why should that person learn stories about what learn the poem daffodils which is like which is a poem that is describing the beauty of a city in in england no it's not I mean, why shouldn't he no, why shouldn't not. no wait wait it depends on it's the it's describes of it's describes natural beauty okay, okay go on no no what i meant i mean i mean shouldn't that shouldn't that kid learn more more about uh, what has been written by Nicobaris people. Maybe we can come back to this in the end and we can we, move we, on to the next We will question. come back to this in the end, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let, let me just uh, go to my final set of questions. I'll just ask them all at once and then just Jess, Jess, can choose how, to, how she wants to answer them. So what would you say, Jayasri, uh, are some necessary steps that the government of India uh, needs to take to mm -hmm. encourage young students into the social sciences. Because for the okay. longest time, for the longest time, this has been a problem with the Indian youth. Like India is one of the few countries in the world which has like such a huge percentage of its population, like so young. Like the average age in India is, I think, I mean, not much more than 30. And it's a country of uh, yeah. one, and, one and a half billion people. So, yeah. and you look at and you look at the kind of subjects that those kids mm -hmm. are thinking about studying. You don't see that much diversity. You don't see that much of a. You, you don't see the yes. kind of diversity that you would expect from a from a pool yeah. that large. And I would say a major factor behind that is the way Indian yeah. kids are often asked to do certain things by their parents and not mm -hmm. do certain other things again by their parents and how. It has been a matter of economical reality, given that India is mm -hmm. a post-colonial state and an amalgamation of post-colonial societies. It's been an mm -hmm. economical reality over the past 50, 60 years that yeah. it's better maybe to choose professional careers or to choose professional mm -hmm. routes for life, because yes. that way, yes. within a very short span of time, you will end up earning quite a lot of money and you will be doing better economically yes. than your, yes. than your say, Predecessors. So, what can you yeah. what you say can be done uh, with regards to encouraging Indian kids, uh, high school goers, or people who are just about uh, say 20, 19, 18, that sort of age? What can we do to make them study these these brilliant subjects? Okay. So, first of all, government can't do anything. They like, mm. have to be blunt over here. Government can't do anything, and. Uh, you have very rightfully put forward, it is a lot of social and economic pressure, which is actually driving the subjects you choose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, like, for, uh, like, I think uh, post independence, there was a phase where people opted for subjects like economics or something, you know, which is which is related to human, uh, like social sciences. Mm -hmm. And after that, the development of science has been higher. And now students mm -hmm. are actually opting for more science related or uh, uh, something related, which is uh, something which is industrial based or something because you get the job very easily. Yes. The job market is very bad in our country because of the overpopulation we have. And uh, we actually have very qualified people also. So if you see the level of competition, it is very high. It's in billions. It's in billions, basically. It's not just so, the overpopulation uh, and the competition, I'd say. It's also the mishandling of the economy by successive yeah. governments. Anyway, go on. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so like uh, you have to understand the major population of a country, they fall in the middle class strata mm -hmm. where they depend on the child to give uh, back, uh, like to, uh, to be a like earning source to the family. So this is the like a uh, very common mental setup. Uh, so like you invest in the like education of the child up to certain age and you expect the child to return. But if you have mm -hmm. to take subjects like humanities and social uh, science, it requires a lot of investment. It takes mm. an investment of at least 30 plus years. Mm. So for this 30 plus years, the parents also have to be mentally strong enough to understand that for 30 plus years, maybe I'll have to bear 
the economic uh, pressure of right. raising yeah. the child as well as his or her education. So how, how many parents are willing to do that? Like now, another thing, you have to see there is a hierarchy. You can say there is a lineage, basically. Most of the people who are into social sciences, you will see the parents are also from very educated background. Most of the people. I will not say it for everyone, yeah. but I will yeah. say most of them. Okay, so the parents are either professors or who have done higher education. So, mm -hmm. like they are economically capable to let the child decide what they want to do and fund them. Like you, the, you want to study for this many years, you can study. Okay, so this is one particular thing. Okay, then another thing is this: like even if it's not that, like they can fund or anything, they have that mental ability to experiment. Okay, let's see what the child does in this particular field. Like, like, I'll give you my personal example. So I am the first generation from my family who has done uh, like more than 12th standard. My parents are both mm -hmm. like just 12th standard class. Uh -huh. And my father oh. expired like 10 years back. So after oh. that, my mother was just living on a pension, which was very less. And thankfully, my mom did not pressurize me to get a job. I just told her mother, I want to do this. And she just told me one thing. Ki, you want to study? You have to find your own resources, how you're going to fund your studies. So you, that you're was from uh, you're from the north. The, you're from Assam. Yes. You grew up in yes. Assam. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. 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 So basically, like I got the leverage. I did not have the economic background to support my studies, but I got the leverage. I got the freedom to choose my discipline. Like, and I was even like made responsible enough to teach me in my head. Ki, if you want to study, you will have to fund it. So you will have to grasp that thing. You like. This is something personal also. So yeah, like, uh, what will I say? It's like the government can't do anything. The government really can't do anything. It's the individual itself. And another thing, like, uh, it's not economic. It's not just social. One more thing is this. The number of job posts which comes out for, uh, mm -hmm. like, taking humanities and social science is comparatively mm -hmm. very less. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. less. And after investing, you know, 30, 40 years into a subject, you're not yes. sure if you will get the job or not. I think a very, uh, like I, think there is, I think a very like uh, easy example to make here would be just your case, like the degree that you yeah. are studying, the, the course that you are studying, yes. let's say research that you're yes. conducting at yeah. uh, the Indian Institute of Science Education Research, Mohali. Uh, you probably yeah. wouldn't have been able to do that at, say, the University of Pune, say, okay. maybe. Okay. Like there are, there are yes. I mean, there's a handful of universities all over the country. Mm -hmm handful of universities mm -hmm. where you would have maybe been able to do what you are doing uh, at Mohali. Yeah. And that that speaks yes. for itself. Like, as you said earlier, like in a country of yeah. like more than a billion, exactly. when the when the amount of opportunities yeah. uh, is yes. so limited, that's that's that is yes. always going to be a big problem. And another thing related to the economic uh, issue is mm -hmm. probably the lack of student financing. I mean, by student financing, yes. I don't just mean students going out into the real world, getting a job and then like earning enough to support their own studies. Yeah. But say yeah. you look at a country like, say, Germany or some of the Nordic countries mm -hmm. or say the UK, where the GDP yeah. per capita is very high, like UK's GDP per capita, if I'm not wrong, is around 42,000 uh, USD, yeah. $42,000. Mm -hmm. With India, where the GDP per capita is barely 2,000, you can't really have mm -hmm. a government which will have an economy that will be able to give out student loans to anyone who will apply. So, so in the UK, like anyone can get a student loan to start a course at university. Like you, if you have an offer and if you are a citizen, okay. you can get a student loan. Uh, and f from that point onwards, yeah, uh, like uh, this one part of, mm -hmm. yeah, from that point onwards, you are no longer dependent on your family to fund your studies. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. hear me? Yes. You, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so the, the the economy is also a big factor, I would say, which is why I talked about yeah. the mishandling of the economy point earlier. Yeah. So no. So, what, what things, another thing is what this say also. About, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, I was saying another factor is this also. If you see the output of different streams, you will see the output, uh, like professional output. Uh, of students coming from science field falls at least in average. But if you see from humanities and social science, there is no average bar. It's actually very bad. Like as a whole, comparatively, if you see, it's actually very low. 
because there are either wise extremes there are of two extremes either wise very good students either otherwise not very good students and you have some like very few amount of people join it because they have interest mm -hmm. and they have the financial mm -hmm. support so th these are very important factors and most of the students they join because they don't have any other yes. resource yes. because yes. that is yes. the you know like a, what it and also colonial the social like mental setup like certain subjects are looked down upon by other subjects so if you're taking a subject like this that means like you are not uh, you know intelligent according mm. to the society mm. so mm. this also has a certain type of pressure on the parents and the pressure is the child so it's basically like it's revolving around one another because you have to get out of the concept that no subject is higher or lower than anyone they have their value and that's why they yes. come into existence and yes. they are still thriving but this is still I, I, I would just like to remark here yeah. uh, on a lighter note that even yeah. i mean even in maths uh, a mathematician starts his or her career say at the age of 35 or 40 we are mm. only studying the literature so we also have to invest the 30 years true. of our life to that's not exactly. true to 30, 35 to 40 i don't agree like you start from okay. the university so it's a uh, you have written i mean on average i mean okay maybe maybe yeah no but just like what uh, like we just talked about some problems but what could be a solution for that like how can you encourage yeah, the students first thing like, say, they, say, say, say you have a cousin say you have a cousin mm -hmm. or a younger sibling or a mm -hmm. friend someone that you mm -hmm. that knows you and you know that person as well and say mm -hmm. that person is thinking about studying anthropology at university she said that person thinking about doing a yeah. bachelor's in anthropology uh how would you mm -hmm. persuade that person to go into that route how would you tell him or her that actually don't worry about what your parents are saying what your friends are saying if you really like this mm. then just go for it like would you just say yeah. it like that or would you i don't know would you take a different route uh for me basically like uh, uh, people have come to me to ask actually like should we take this particular discipline or that particular discipline now that answer is not i am someone who is going to give it to you you will have to decide what particular discipline right you want to choose and after that i can just help you i can mm-hmm just help you like how you can overcome certain how should i do for me i have been very lucky because since the starting i have got scholarships so i have got scholarships which funds and that's why my so i say them about the scholarships what different type of scholarships they have like for in, like indian government they give the single girl child scholarship and i am one of the recipient of this particular scholarship so uh, this is one scholarship which your government is providing for educating girl child single girl child specifically so uh, there are scholarship pattern can you hear joshi what is it no i can't no her video seems uh, her video feed seems frozen to me yeah let's just wait a few seconds uh, can you repeat can you what me? you said in the last 20 seconds yeah, i can hear okay i said like uh, see there are different scholarships which i got i make them uh, like uh, knowledgeable about that and i also introduced them to this particular you know government sites where you can apply for scholarships and apart from that i i tell them like how they can be small entrepreneurs they can make mm -hmm. handcrafts things and they can sell online which mm -hmm. actually helped a part of my studies also in the initial days so uh, it depends from person to person how you want to take the challenge whether you take it positively or whether you take it as a burden if you take it as a burden it's not going to work out it's not going mm -hmm. to work out you you will have to believe that you can like unless and until you believe in this, this particular thing it's not going to happen see problems will come from every side but how you find your solution is up to you i can only give you suggestions like uh, people have come like is this particular subject important is this particular subject like and sadly most of the people they take anthropology because they want to crack uh, ias exam civil mm. services basically mm -hmm. yeah so like uh, they think anthropology is a easy subject yes like they don't understand how important anthropology is for human 
because anthropology is a weapon which was used by the british you know to yes. divide india into yes. two parts yeah so like they don't understand the simple logic it was a very simple weapon which was used very efficiently and it's not only like the british have used it like if you talk about hitler also the concept yeah. of race and everything the french the french in algeria the the belgians in congo yeah. like in the list goes exactly. on yeah exactly exactly so first of all the individual like as students you will have to learn to respect each discipline unless and until you learn to respect the discipline it's a mutual thing you don't respect the discipline you don't give yourself to the discipline how will the discipline give you back some, something right. it's a given flow so first change you have to be well like you have to be strong to face the world who is not face the world basically i'll say face the indian society who is going to criticize if you take humanities mm-hmm. and social science mm-hmm. if you're very lucky you will not get any criticism mm-hmm. then the entire thing is up to you how you make it glow or you know grow or glow however you want it yeah and do you think it matters which part of india one's come one comes from like in this regard like if you are coming from yeah, say, M- manipur uh like yeah. uh, where the state government probably like doesn't have that much money to fund you like if there was such a scheme like not many people would know about it like yeah so like how do you think the state that one comes from plays it does, a role it does for example uh, uh the uh, indian government they had few years back released a scholarship known as asha or asha deep i am not able to recall the name it is for students from northeast region to fund their bachelors like it was a scholarship which was like ranging from 3200 or 5000 i don't remember the amount but this particular amount was given to the students per month on a monthly oh. basis okay, okay. and this but the thing but the like drawback of this particular scheme was that it was only available for students coming from northeast now in india we have i agree 80% like northeast has a higher number of uh, you know tribal populations but if you come to central and southern india there is more number of tribes in this particular belt and they the condition of the tribes are really not that good as to the uh, tribes found in northeastern region and one one thing could be like the introduction of uh, you know christianity in that particular region mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. and you know the introduction of english language which has actually helped that particular region to flourish not to forget the natural resources which is found in the particular region but if you just ignore that you find economically uh, very weak students coming from you know the southern and the central belt of our country even they need those t- particular type of support yes. so you mm-hmm. don't have any government body which is actually focusing on this particular aspect mm-hmm. like very com- like very simply if i it's very sad actually uh, if you talk about tribes people just think about northeast are you getting it like the concept mm-hmm. of uh, like scheduled tribe or scheduled caste has been so wrongly misinterpreted like 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 they look down upon okay like once i was talking to one of the particular student in icer and uh, he or she he was say, like telling telling me that uh, i don't want to tell all this thing because you know people will think that i'm whining and crying but that's the concept that's the concept they don't want to agree it like i agree yes i agree ki now uh, there is a lot of corruption which is happening i agree mm-hmm. to that but because of the corruption you are actually willing to close your eyes to something mm-hmm. which is wrong mm-hmm. and you're trying to justify the wrong act because uh, someone is doing corruption over there yeah so like if like you you are not able to separate both identities both have different identities so yes you need more uh, you know concern taking all this particular thing the government should be more concerned in how they are dividing this particular person. like everyone they whine about you know uh, the caste system the quota system and this mm-hmm. and blind everything but they are not able to understand why it came into existence it but was isn't the they developing every indian in the country isn't the caste system worth like, whining about the isn't the caste Sorry? system worth whining about or worth complaining about or worth the no, criticism, not the caste system, system. i use a wrong word sure. yeah, i use a wrong word i mean to say the quota system like the like uh-huh. this one categorization of see mm. it's uh, like caste mm-hmm, is the wrong mm-hmm. word that is something which is actually questionable and it has to be debated more right yeah i think we all agree on that so but yeah so like, i think uh, you can't uh, make I, people I, understand like i'm tired of telling he belongs from you know a scheduled tribe or scheduled community i are having the leverage 
so mm-hmm. they don't understand it because they are not anthropologists that's it the concept mm-hmm. of so yeah so i uh, yeah we have gone past the hour mark so i'm not going to ask any more questions if prakash you want to ask anything just yeah, yeah we, can, uh, we can stop so this counting. is this is very very similar to what rudradeep asked uh, uh, i mean you already said that the government cannot do anything to increase awareness uh, but i i would like to ask uh, is there are there any social platforms or can you change the curriculum in some way or are there like are there mo- enough number of do movies exist or how can movies be made so that they can attract new people to the field of anthropology for for, okay, for example uh, even in, in maths there are some movies uh, which depict some mathematicians although mm-hmm. they they depict those mathematicians very in a, in a in a very wrong way and but still i mean they give rise to some debates which would not exist otherwise they give rise to some people asking yeah. some questions about some mathematicians okay. and so can something similar similar be done in for anthropology well well yes. well movie is actually a very good way to convey your message because whatever you see you t- tend to retain more rather than what you read and there is there is a subject called as visual anthropology where you actually talk about visually you know making people aware about anthropological facts and something like that so um there is no such platform yet but yeah there is the social media there are various anthropological groups all across the globe as as well as with, there is the anthropological survey of india as as, uh, as well but the main problem with all these groups is that the in famousness of this particular subject this subject is not that famous like like i have even met people whom i had to explain what is anthropology and the same person did not ha- like i did not have to explain him what is chemistry or physics like uh, i remember when i took up uh, zoology honors with my past course in anthropology and uh, the same botany so i was questioned why did you take anthropology like marks acche nahi the kya tumhare so this was the yeah. thing like uh, and i was like no it's my choice so, like i took this combination so like how will you change change you, the change cannot come just suddenly introduce the change but the willingness to even understand also so if this particular thing is not there like movies i remember when to try nana parker was acting over there and he was uh, depicted as a shudra He was a person who was belonging, yeah, from the lower category. Mm-hmm. It is actually talking about the caste system, okay? So, uh, all that he was playing, and uh, it is a. Uh, it was released in nineteen. Um, Diksha. The name of the movie was Diksha. You should mm-hmm. watch it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, like. it was a like it's kind of a dark movie but it will tell you a lot about how caste system thing how it is affecting the life of people at every stage so like that is one of the movies which i liked it mm-hmm. there are many movies also like um, there are many photographic documentaries on tribes and other things these things are important but the thing is the willingness to see has to exist if there is no willingness to see they can only be there um. You well, make people uh, watch them. So, so recently, I I went to Toronto, and in Toronto, uh, in the Toronto Museum, what they did, uh, they 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 made a movie. The movie was like made in this way. It was it was it was amazing to see. Uh, so, the screen was very wide, mm-hmm. and there was something happening on that screen, okay. and then that screen was running from left to right, and as it was running from left to right, okay. you could see more and more stories mm-hmm. coming up and all these stories were the stories about mm-hmm. about the native indians of of canada and they were showing okay. how their lives changed over over many years how the britishers first arrived and then uh, mm-hmm. i mean how it it how they started fighting among themselves um uh, okay. so 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 yeah so this is a very very in, you know, innovative history. model yeah yeah so this is a very innovative uh-huh. model to to show show what happened or ha uh, but to, and this was this was yeah. in the main heartland of toronto which is one of the main cities in canada so 
if something like this mm-hmm. existed in say kolkata or say in delhi mumbai oh, then I mean, the indian yeah. museum in kolkata i mean they do have some sections on anthropology uh, yeah sorry yes yeah on. they do have they... and it's a damn good museum actually but no one really they goes do there have. but the problem over here is like you have to see canada is a developed country they have a lot of fund they have a lot of funds to do yeah you know many things is that pay of funds you have to like very nicely utilize a fund which will actually be fruitful otherwise you know the public is going to just question where did you waste the money yes are you getting it so yes. like yeah, you yeah. cannot just invest you cannot just invest because in a country like ours there are many factors which is actually influence in seeing everyone's life at very different levels mm-hmm. so it it is not just you know like a concept of uh, you know the government doing this and that or us thinking this and that there are many external as well as internal factors so it has to be sorted one after the other and economy is one of the key factor if you don't have economic yes. strength you cannot bring about that much change yeah, that's a very good point like i know in the uk there is a museum of archaeology and anthropology that i've been to in cambridge like not in a big town or a big city cambridge which like which is really not that big if you if you know how big london is or say how big uh, birmingham is uh, and the maintenance of this university is almost entirely carried out by the university of cambridge university mm-hmm. a single university maintaining a world class museum uh, it, it it wouldn't be probably possible in today's india like given the dire straits yeah. economically yeah. speaking that universities find themselves in or finding themselves in yeah. like increasingly uh, every day and- and again like if you have to talk about the history of india you have to understand in the present political scenario history is changing mm. history is changing so mm. <laughs> frankly to be very frank like scholars you are actually not having the right to even say everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes so very like true. there's a, a think, lot of yeah. uh, like political and economic pressure on oh, yes. every and every in every sphere oh yes Oh yes, and and uh, well, I mean, I don't really want to say much about this on on record. I can we can talk about this later once I stop recording. But one thing that I will say though uh, is it's very curious to see how these pressures are being disproportionately applied or exerted on people who write in uh, non-English languages. Like for example, say a yes, say a yes. historian like Ramchandra Guha. who i mean it's ramchandra guha is a strange example because he never did a degree in history he has i think a masters in economics like uh, mm-hmm. he did go on to write some very important books uh, in history like for the general public to read i mean and those books turned out to be like quite good academically speaking even uh, like academic mm-hmm. merit wise but you don't see this kind of pressure you don't see the kind of pressure that was uh, applied to say gauri lankesh uh being mm-hmm. applied to say ramchandra guha like the state okay. like the government the mm-hmm. federal government let's say and i'm using the word federal to mean what in india we say the central government the federal government exactly. federal agencies find it uh-huh. easier to target uh-huh. people who say write in kannada or write in tamil or write in uh like some dialects yeah. of bhojpuri or whatever yeah. um we can we can talk a bit more about it later uh but yeah i have no more questions and prakash if you have nothing more to say um, now we can maybe thank jayashree yeah uh yeah. i i have asked all my questions okay uh, so thanks uh, m- many thanks to our guest to our, to our guest for today jayashree mazumdar and um so if people want to follow you like do you have so you have a you have uh, an academic website right i have been to your academic website yes. so so yes, the, can i just have. say out your like academic website details or if you have say academic twitter or <laughs> academic okay facebook. i don't remember actually facebook is is uh, so, like okay sorry go on anyone can anyone can search me on my facebook which is j a y a s h r w e space m a z u m d e r but just put icer mohali next to it otherwise maybe i'll not pop up as such and uh, yeah my website i think if you put it in google search my name it pops up so it's a wingsit site so it will be there and i have a research gate site also if anyone wants to contact me they are very welcome to contact me on my email address which is again j a y a s h r e m a z u m d e r at the rate i i s e r mohali dot ac dot so that okay. is my email address so yeah. website i'm so sorry it's i just remember it's a wingsit site it's like right. j mazumdar dot 91 wingsit 
uh, but if you put my name in google it will surely appear there okay so and thank you to both of yeah. you <laughs> No, the, but no, just it, it was, for was our, talk and it was really pleasure. nice talking to both of you just just stay on for a bit longer and okay and if anyone wants to contact prakash yeah. just text me i'll send you his number <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not that important <laughs> no 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 but still like if anyone wants to contact prakash yeah, yeah. okay fine uh, i'm going to stop recording now uh, thanks thanks a bunch again to jayasree and thank to prakash you. for joining